going to the next slide. Okay. Right, as far as we're going to see in our play 2048. Okay, so, so if you don't know how to play, I'm sure the young gentleman, I'll see what you asked in the last presentation with the gals to show you how it's played. Uh, 2048 is a very popular board game. So, let me tell you that a little bit about it. We decided to have a contest. I think the content of what I've been talking about. So what is 2048? It's a really popular game. Lots of people are playing it. You can play it on your iPhone or iPad or Android or on the web. So it's, 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 it's can be described as candy cut for masters. So it's, it's, it's pretty neat and a lot of fun and very addictive. So the 4 by 4 grid, you slide the numbers around, and you try to combine them, like numbers combined, they add up, they add to the score. Uh, one of your goals is to try to produce a pile of 2048 for a very high score. So, like, you know, that's neat. I can program this in smallpox. So, it took a couple of hours and did a basic version in smallpox. You know, you could have a piece of a concept that you're looking to have some fun, and even more importantly, it's close to new things that are smallpox that it had never seen. So it's a very special for my small poppers, and we provide these samples, a running example of each of our products. So basically, they could hit the ground and run it. It's, it's a lot easier to take, if you, you're brand new to a language, it's a lot easier to take an example and modify it and see how it works and try to, try to learn from it and nothing. So we provide the examples in both. And I wanted to show you this is the first very basic example of 2048. My color is meant to be deliberately basic because I, I didn't want to make it so secret because that's what I wanted the contestants to do. So if it was somebody not familiar with small talk, they could take the basic version and enhance it from there. And again, so somebody new to small talk could put the game running. It's also really impressive for small talkers. It lets them show up what they can do with small talk. It lets them share their knowledge with others in the community. And it's also what they produce is like great examples to non small talkers. It's a good thing to do with that. So check out the ones who have it worked, check this out. So it is really a win win for everybody. Like you then mentioned, it means that people who have never used small talk, lots of things that have never seen. Even off the comments, but wow, it is so great to be small talk. This is a, a more, a more focused version, I guess, in the other two slides here. So it added some color, it tells you a big yarn, it keeps the score in the top right, it contains the late time, and it also has an auto play feature with some different directives. So that's, and this is a little more, I didn't give this one out, but that's more what I was looking for for some contestants. So how do we grade the entry? So the scores are based on how well the animation is done, whether they provide a simple and clear code, which is a small part design. The heuristic rules. Uh, I was looking for any innovative features um, that they built in. And if they provided autoplay, the, the average of 10 runs through the game. And you might think the third one, heuristic, and the last one, still so, so related, but you could have something that was relatively you know, simple and brute force, produce a very high score versus a very clever heuristic that they were, they were such a great one. We've got a number of different interfaces provided by, by the different entrants. We had people using the, representing the board with regions and labels, with input fields and dividers, with the basic action buttons, and worked pretty well. And a number of provided custom views. My example is that we could use custom views and classic models and controls. So 
the heuristic. Heuristically, the entry divided the heuristic with two different approaches. Uh, a deep look ahead for a certain phrase or evaluation of the board. Where we are, if we make a move, what's the board's value, what's the heuristic to value the board. Those are the two main approaches. Now, I should point out the game is non deterministic because after each move, a two or a four appears in each aisle in a random spot. So you can't do a free search and figure out exactly the you know, determinants of passing. It's a very determinant thing that makes it more interesting. And the Europe is certainly more interesting. So, one thing that I think we have to have, and it basically failed to move with the highest score after it went down N levels with, with random moves. And so, so it was the next move that produced the highest score. Even with that non determinism, it seemed to it, work fairly well. More of a brute force method, but it actually worked fairly well. The other was using board valuation. So, for example, one board valuation was if it, it, it valued higher, larger corner value, how many empty cells there were, more is better. You know, when you're to fill up, because then you can do a spot. Uh, like adjacent numbers, because those are the ones you should combine. So there's more empty cells and higher score. Another is that a few moves look ahead, we try to minimize the difference in values and cells. Values merging by value numbers. Another one, actually, board valuation three is one that I tried out. And so the two moves look ahead, it, it looks at the board score, and also, I think I mostly close the tiles left to right or top to bottom, it's value higher, increasing value of numbers, and increasing from top to bottom. And also, that a move is top, and a move is top, or top to bottom. Low value. So I did, and this is just the average score of 10 runs for the, uh, for the, for the final one. And we're just the very. So the final, I went through all the answers, it took a lot of time going through the code, but it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty easy to winnow it down to basically five finalists. And I was telling you those five finalists. These are what the interfaces look like. Let's take the first one. So this is kind of a, a very clean, simple, straightforward layout. And the real nice thing about this is that it has undo. It's kind of the innovative piece that they put in. It was an unlimited undo, so it's such a fast, you can fast up, fast up, fast up, fast up. It did not, however, have combination of moves or, or auto player heuristic. So that's a score fairly low, but nice and effective. This next one, these buttons, and you can have the numbers turned on and off. And also had, I believe that the theme for colors was that uh, warmer and darker as, as the numbers were, were higher. And this was actually done by somebody Brand new so, I think this was a really good achievement in the long time. It was a very nice running office and I don't think they even used my, my example. It was a very nice achievement. Next example, and I believe the question looks like that. I think it's because it didn't use better doppling. There's some noise when I recorded it. You, you don't see that in the normal running operation. But this is actually a really nice entry. It allows allow three different expert levels of autoplay. It allows you to change the animation speed. And then it animated the noise. It slid the tiles one row or column at a time to the final position. Nice animation, really good uh, autoplay, and it should be very high score. So in the game, Dow Fulton has score, so it has all the elements that I was looking for for a, for a high score. The next one, 
the 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 now, also, you might know that the animation was actually very well done. The tiles have to slide all over, and one tile has to, has to slide one face, and then and another has to slide three. They move concurrently, and they arrive at the end at the same time. So all the animation happens at the same time, and all the tiles stop. They move at the same time. So, very, very well done animation. You can also see, when you combine, there's a little, little fireworks to play. So, beautiful board, beautiful tile, very, very good animation. The next entry, last entry here, is a heat map to play. What I like about it, you can change the size of the board, you can change the speed, you can Start and stop the animation. And this is one of the newest innovations. It would allow you diagonal moves. Uh, I didn't use those for, for doing the auto play, but it would enable those for the auto play or, or manual play to do diagonal moves. And that was really neat to be fun to play with. You could also change the color palette of your heat map. But one of the nicest things I like about the heat map. The heat map animates. You can actually watch it. The, the heat map itself morphs into position following each move. Also, each new tile, there's an animation for a new tile. And as the tiles combine, they, they, they flash, flash the number in yellow. So with that, I would like to announce the winners. We have uh, three winners for the contest and two honorable mentions. We were able to select some mentions. So first, the honorable mention. The first honorable mention goes to Alexander Raj. And what I really like about him, uh, his entry, nice team, team layout, and you went over them there. It's very nice for manual play. The second one I'm going to mention is a particular order. It goes by Alex, Alex Aronowski, and we're in the small class, which, which is one of the things we're looking for. It's a great vehicle to attract new people to small class. And one of the nice features that he has in his code is that he made all the, all the, the, the board moves reduce two operations, and that is six left and rotate the board. So, for example, if you shift it left, so it was a simple shift left. If you shift it a, a, a different direction, you rotated the board until it was a shift left. So that was a clever way of reducing and simplifying things, which is the goal of good idea in small time. After the color theme, we had a color theme and it took the color to the warmer and darker as the color got higher. Again, that's my. The second honorable mention. Now, very pleased to announce the winners. And in the winners, they, 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 they got listed as a dragon flag. So, this is a design was extremely helpful in, in helping get the test contest rolling. And she got, she went through the, the store and just grabbed all kinds of things from the one looking at the like we got a whole bunch of fun five stuff. This concept is mostly about being fun and fun for the people, but we wanted to give we wanted to give something new that the people would enjoy. So second and third place five. So my first second and third place five is from Norbert. And what I like about this, this actually zooms down to be the best score. It's the model of the other auto play. And it did this with dots of steps, and 
So even though the game is not a common issue, you don't think so too. And it was valuable as the board started to fill up to get a deeper search, how to make it smarter. And actually, there were three levels of auto play, three levels of, of, of expertise. I only used the other one. I didn't even bother going to level three, but it was just to scare the others on that. The level four was very effective. I call it kind of looking at the high score sheet because it was the model of the competition. This is very nice animation. And it spreads things over in a nice sweet fashion. One row of column at a time. And a nice thing to do with it. They can still continue to work when it is running. You can change the speed, the model play on or off. So it was a very nicely done application. Also ties to second and third. This is by David Ross, who many of us many of us know. And the reason the tiles look so beautiful is because he used ray tracing to render the tiles. And I believe he even actually has a code to do the ray tracing of all of them. And it took the tiles, I don't know if it looks really great, but the tiles are funny. And the animation is very, very good. Like I said, it, it would move from the multiple screens, so all the tiles are stopped at the same time as the game. I had a fairly constructed uh, Eurostat, so I didn't produce really, really high scores. After the contest ended, they were actually said, oh, I, I am so sick, I had a look at that. So we the past the time for said, you know, he, he had some more time to do that. He took a little more time to do that. That was better. He had a nice fireworks animation at the end. This is another really nicely done example and it's just tired, it's just done so much of it really well done. And very happy to now to first place an overall 2048 coding contest winner and these are some of the features. An innovative heat map display and the heat map actually animated you just pointed out before is more from the place. That's the last one, has the same idea with constraint tile animation, tiles moving at multiple speeds so they all stop at the same time. When a new tile pops up, it animates, like we had a frame that was just going to pop up. It had a really nice effect. When the number is clouded and combined, it has a black number in yellow. Um, for Board valuation is like a jack, low jack, low material. It is too, too look at how the jack is very pleasant and very smart. And it's also just, you know, it has just some really, really nice, innovative features. You could play the board at different sizes, which is kind of neat kind of fun. But I think it's probably the neatest one was the allowed diagonal mode. Like I mentioned, you can use those diagonal moves to play manually. You head down the control key and get to the board 45 degrees. Or it also works in autoplay. You can have to use that feature for the, for the, uh, the average of 10 runs, but you can try that to the out. So you can really use a number of color palettes and have really nice control layout and, and color help. So it was a very thoughtful and well done small pop application. And that goes to Drummer Evo Volrat. I call the country because there's so many innovative features and so well done, but the innovation for the force. So that is the game of 2048, and, and congratulations to all the winners. Absolutely. Absolutely.
Sure, sure, well, certainly. If anybody would like to see an example, do you have an example that I want to do? I have a different example for both our products. And actually, the one for Optic Studio uses that, that new next generation uh, user interface that I talked about, which is really interesting in Windows. Do you have any examples available? I'm going to do, I, I welcome any, any submissions if you want to go after work or, or try it out or have fun with it. Good question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great question. So, so the code of the winning, the winning example of the five finals, we are going to make it available. Not available yet, but we are going to make it available. But Anybody have some suggestions? Can you all? Uh, oh, we'll always entertain that certain question. I have to ask my boss. Okay, any more questions? Thank you very much, and I hope you can start with that. A lot of fun.